Okay, so typically video game movies get a lot of crap. People just don't really like them. And, you know, they have some pretty good arguments against them. Me, I usually have a fun time anytime I see one. And so when I heard that they were doing a Monster Hunter film, a live action movie of a game that I've never played outside of that one level in MGS uh, Peace Walker, I was interested. And I thought it was funny that, again, Mila, whose name I cannot pronounce, you know, Alice from Resident Evil film series, and uh, Lilu from Fifth Element, she was going to be starting it again. Yeah, another video game movie. It's like, okay. what What's not to like? So, I tried it, and, uh... Despite all of its problems, it was a lot of fun. So I'm going to get into it now. You with me? So, okay, first things first. If you haven't seen this movie yet, you need to go into it knowing that it's not going to be a contender for the Academy Awards. It's not going to win any awards, period, okay? This is not that type of movie. This movie is a cheesy popcorn flick. Through and through, alright? And if you recognize that and know that going in, you're going to have a really fun time, alright? If you're expecting, ah, uh, this better be better acting than her last film, and ah, uh, this That'll be decent. Yeah, you're going to be really disappointed. Okay. Uh, this is not going to be the best live action video game movie ever made. Okay. Not by a long shot. This is literally just, hey, this seems like something that could make money. Let's try to have a fun time making it while trying to make money. <laughs> that's all this movie is. And that's what we get. Um, this movie is the pinnacle of cheesy popcorn movies and it's a lot of fun <laughs> I mean simply put uh, and part of a popcorn film is kind of bad at for you, kind of bad acting and some bad dialogue <laughs> all right that's expected to be seen in this film some of the actors they just don't deliver the lines all that well um, now, is there anyone in this film that you just cringe anytime they say a word? Eh, not really. I mean, it just depends on your taste. It depends on what you've seen before. And, uh... For some people, yes. For people who have seen some really awful movies, absolutely not. You'll have a really good time with this movie. Uh, and... Probably the one thing that surprised me most about this film was that, without spoiling anything, partway through, it gets kind of this Robinson Crusoe feel. If you've ever read that book, or ever seen any of the movies, or if you're one of the few people who saw the rare sci-fi film Robinson Crusoe on Mars, then this is more up your alley. But, um, yeah, it had this... It, it kind of felt like, yeah, you know what, let's just kind of base this off of Robson Crusoe. And it kind of works, in my opinion. It's like, yeah, I would not have thought about that if I was making this movie, but no, it, they did. It works. And I enjoyed it. Um, that being said, they spent quite a bit of time on the whole Robson Crusoe vibe. And this is only a movie that's an hour and a half. So, by the time that it stops doing the Robinson Crusoe theme, you got half an hour left to tie everything up. And uh, let's just say that um, that last half hour is uh, crazy, bloated, but fun. Uh, best I can describe it. 
It feels like the last half hour of this movie was written by a cokehead who was on an adrenaline high who just went, screw it, let's just throw everything into the script right now. In the last half hour? Yeah, right now. <sighs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> I mean, that's how the last half hour of this film felt. It felt like a druggie wrote the last half hour of the film <laughs> because they just throw in everything but the kitchen sink into the last half hour. And it is insanity. It is brainless. It is crazy and it's a lot of fun if you just embrace the chaos of the last half hour. I mean, if you're objectively looking at this film, especially the last half hour, it, it, it's going to be a steaming pile of crap. If you go in expecting, okay, I'm going to see some cheesy action, some giant monsters, and a final half hour that feels like it was uh, ran by a guy on speed, heroin, and crack mixed together with a Red Bull and a uh, Jägermeister over ice, then you're going to absolutely love this movie because <laughs> that's what you're going to get, okay? You gotta go into this expecting a mindless fun time, okay? You gotta go in like a Michael Bay film, almost. Actually, now that I think about it, Michael Bay might have actually been one of the producers of this film. <laughs> he wasn't the director, but he might have been one of the producers. I'm not sure. I'm probably confusing that with another movie. But um, I would not be surprised if he was one of the producers on this film, because at times, it kind of feels like a Michael Bay film. Now, that kind of depends on you. A lot of people hate Michael Bay. I actually enjoy Michael Bay to a certain degree. When I go into a Michael Bay film, I'm not expecting an Oscar film. I'm expecting a hell of a good time. And that's what I got with this. I actually watched this film twice <laughs> because it was good, fun, mindless enjoyment. And sometimes that's all we need, okay? Ye no, this is not the best movie of the year I've seen. No, it's not the best video game movie I've ever seen. No, it's not even the best Mila Jehovah I think I pronounced that right, that I've ever seen. But it is fun if you embrace the chaos. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my review of Monster Hunter. And, um, I think you might really enjoy this if you're looking for a fun, cheesy popcorn flick. If you're expecting Gone with the Wind, avoid this at all costs, because this is not that. <laughs> so, my name is Chris with 11 Hour Reviews, and that is all.